told the story about how she had DM'd me. Um, I was doing a movie. I was doing this movie with Nick Cassavetes, who directed The Notebook. We were shooting in Bulgaria. And so towards the end of the filming process, a freak situation happened. I got staff. I was in the hospital, and I, I hadn't responded to her in a little while. Mm. And I finally got back to her, and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry I didn't text you back. I, I was in the hospital with staff. She's like, mm, yeah, sure. <laughs> staff, right. Oh. Um, <laughs> Who gets staff yeah, these days? Yeah, like you're doing a movie. How does that happen? Yeah. Um, and then I left and then I, we kind of were texting back and forth for a while. I always go back home after, uh, I shoot and stay with my mom for a little bit. And then when I got to LA, I just walked in the, in the door and she goes, I think it's so interesting that we're in the same city. And I told her I was going to take her on the date the next night. She goes, and you're not here. And I just said, fuck it, go do it get in the car and go and so I just said drop drop a pin and I drove down pen. wow I mean both of you were bold yeah, I, I feel like she was well, she, is, calling she you is out. such a yeah. force of nature yeah. yeah she's such a bold human being and she's so honest mm. and it's something that I've really really learned over the past almost two years mm. of being not just more honest externally but internally mm. with whatever you want like if you want that shit go get it yeah. if you want to go chase the big giant career, then go chase it. Or mm. if you want to sit at home and pick your nose and watch a TV show, like also <laughs> that's totally okay. Um, and so I just said, I have to match this energy. Like I really like this girl. I haven't mm -hmm. met her and this is a weird feeling. And so I'm driving. I lived kind of like up off Woodrow Wilson and I was driving down the 405 and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to pass out. Like, this girl's so beautiful. She's like Aww. been super funny. What if it, what if, all of the things that have happened through this phone don't add up in person. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to just lose my shit. So I got there and I was like, okay, Chase, you, you have to, you have to figure this out. You have to pull something out of your ass right now <laughs> to make this work. And I sat in the car and I saw her come up the stairs and she was wearing like a white pleather fit. And I looked and the valet guy is looking at me. He's like, Hey man, can I park your car? And I was like, dude, I just need like, 30 seconds to get my shit together. He's like, are you all right? And, I'm like, and I literally just confessed to this valet guy. I was like, hey man, I've never met this girl, but I, I this really so like endearing. her. And she's right there. Yes, the one in the all white with the, <laughs> the blonde hair. I, I I just need to get my shit together so I can make sure that this works. And he's like, you got it, man. Aww. And I was like, okay. And so I just pulled the most unconventional move of all time. And I just grabbed her and I kissed her and I said, thank God you're real. <gasps> yeah. And I hadn't even said, hi, I'm Chase. Nice to wow. officially meet you. Um, and I just remember walking in after I did that. And I was like, where the fuck did that come from, dude? <laughs> and the what, what was that? Was like, yeah, that was not on SpongeBob. Yeah, not like, on <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right. Um, yeah. yeah. And she was like, something about that level of confidence was, uh, she was like, it was the most attractive thing. And I'm like, I don't know where that came from. I, I think I blacked out. I think I fully blacked out <laughs> and just so committed amazing. to the bit. Um, and then, yeah, the rest is kind of history. Well, That's she really allowed you to be that way. Actually, I was just watching Dune 2 with mm -hmm. my husband last night. And there's a scene I where, see the connection. Where, yeah. <laughs> where I am the worm. No, no, listen. Mm -hmm. Where Zendaya says to uh, Timothy Chalamet something like <laughs> use their character names <laughs> I can't remember, I can't remember. <laughs> does anybody no, wait, know Chani, their names Chani and Paul okay, she just Chani, watched it too <laughs> Chani oh. says to Paul something like like will you stay with me forever and he mm. says like as long as I breathe and I was like you never say things like that to me and he's like well you never say things like that to me and I was Meanwhile, like guys, yeah, could you, just you wait need a to second? allow each other <laughs> you need to you need to that's true yeah yeah, she she let you do that. Thirty yeah. minutes later, though, he's like marrying somebody else. Sorry, <laughs> spoiler. Yeah, oopsies. Oh wait, I'm not. I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> you haven't finished it. When when did this happen? It's a long movie. <laughs> she's she's doing chunks of Dune too. Yeah. Right. 30, 30 minutes. She's intervals. watching it on TikTok. What do you think Florence Pugh was doing there? Ten intervals. <laughs> wait, I'm so <laughs> mad. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's really disappointing. <laughs> that like, is actually just, a huge spoiler. We'll definitely have to like, cut that. Uh, okay, well, anyway. I think it's reason enough. We're not worried about spoiling Dune 2. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty <laughs> I think it's, I think it's $700 billion. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody saw it three times. Yeah.
Yeah. No, no. But the point was just that like you were able to be bold in a way that you hadn't been before because mm-hmm. Kelsey was bold too. Mm-hmm. Like you were gonna yeah. match her energy. You were able to be yeah. bold like Paul was to to Chani. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. To Chani. <laughs> Chani. Yeah. As and Chani was bold to Paul yeah. too. They're yeah. bold <laughs> together. It's just it it's is, a profit couple. It, it, is. it was really right. nice to hear your side of the Seven. story because when Kelsey told it. On call her daddy. Mm-hmm. And it's a great story when she tells it too. It just you sound so confident that you wouldn't know all the stuff that was happening prior oh, to no, that. I was so it's really my pants. sweet. To I was hear. so scared. I was so scared. I was so terrified. Um, dating is a t- terrible space. Like it's mm. the most oh, yeah. terrifying thing. And I just was like, please let this work for all things living. Um, <laughs> and it did. And it's been. Um, like really the greatest chapter of life. Truth that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. really sweet. So the moral of the story is you go to call her daddy for Chase Stokes the hero. Yeah. You come to Podcraft for Chase Stokes yeah. the sensitive intro. Get the, right? get the honesty you know, of it. I mean, yeah. call it like you want to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I did have one question mm-hmm. about um, your relationship with Kelsey. Mm-hmm. And feel free to give as little sure. as you want. But um, or as much. Or as, as much, yeah. Pick your poison. Pick your poison. <laughs> Not with a business woman. Um, she came on podcast and we, mm-hmm. she's one of our favorites. Yeah. And I'm just curious. I feel like with every relationship, you learn something new about yeah. love or about connection. And I'm wondering if there's something you feel you've learned with Kelsey that you could share. Oh, um, I think especially with having big careers, there's so much opportunity to misstep or to mm. forget or get lazy because there's so much happening. And it's been a chapter of life where you actively choose to show up every day. And I think, especially with the world that we're in, you have so much just handed to you so often that you can get in a state of mind to where you can get really lazy. And it's it's just not a relationship where you can do that. Mm. And I've been so fortunate that we have met each other in the middle of, of how we show up for this relationship, how we show up for each other in big moments and in little moments. And it's it's been a product of going through previous relationships and them not working mm-hmm. and then reevaluating and seeing, you know, not to shout her records um, title out, but like it, it is, it's acknowledging patterns from times past mm-hmm. and how do we take the good from those and the bad from those and rewrite sort of the, the reality of what now is. Um, and she's just somebody who has made me show up in a better way than I ever have. And mm-hmm. and it is through like having to show up for a relationship in times where it's not easy. It's like yeah. taking a flight, a red eye, like you're talking about and getting on that plane and showing up when you know your person needs you. Mm-hmm. Or vice versa. Like she has done the same thing. It is it is such an equal playing field. Um, and so I think that's something that I've I've really learned because it's so easy to just be like, oh, I'm tired or mm-hmm. I'll see you in two days. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's been three weeks, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just do it and it ends up being the best thing you could ever do, not just for yourself, but for your person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Drop a pin. <laughs> yeah. Drop the damn pin. 